Welcome to Yung Tuition. I am Yung. Let's continue discussing basic issues in climate research since 1860. I'm so glad so many people have watched my previous talk on Sabina Hausenfeld. And a warm welcome for so many new subscribers. On the request from one of the reviewers, I will explain the so-called equilibrium climate sensitivity or climate sensitivity for short, that Dr. Hausenfeld used as a scarecrow in her latest talk about climate change. Are you ready, not for climax, but to like, to share, and to subscribe, as well as to keep your little bell activated? Let's go and have fun. What is a climate sensitivity? Simple. It is a number in Kelvin that the IPCC has used to predict global warming due to CO2 doubling. This number is calculated from a linear equation with a slope called the climate sensitivity factor. But bear in mind, the slope is not fixed. It ranges from 0.18 to 0.45. It works like this, given the change in infrared radiation F caused by CO2 doubling, then the increase in the air temperature near the surface can be calculated by using a slope between 0.18 and 0.45. For people like Sabina, and the climate researchers she mentioned in her talks, they would always choose the largest slope proposed so far in order to maximize the climate sensitivity. Why? To make people feel scared. But that's not all what they have done, mind you. As you can read from the IPCC's reports, the climate sensitivity is not treated as a single value number but a random number governed by some pecunious statistical distribution. How come? Because they want to dress up their argument by inferential statistics, such as confidence interval and z-score, as you might have learned in high school. To do so, 50 or so state-of-the-art climate models have been used to simulate what might happen in the future. All of the climate models are encoded with the estimate climate sensitivity with the largest slope, as I shown before, similar to all people were jabbed with the same vex. Due to slightly different approximation and algorithm that are used for individual climate models, it is not surprising at all that the outcomes of the simulated results for climate sensitivity differ noticeably from one climate model to another, as shown in the table Sabina used. What I found most disturbing in Dr. Hausenford's talk on climate sensitivity is that she and her business partner merely select the highest climate sensitivity values from a few climate models as a basis for spreading the hypothetical disasters for the general public. Think about it. If you have studied statistical mechanics, you might call such a way to obtain the distribution of the climate sensitivity as an ensemble average, which simply means that a mean value for a random variable in a system can be obtained by running many identical systems just once. Nevertheless, it should be made clear that there is no guarantee the simulated distribution of climate sensitivity are real or reliable because none of these climate models are the same as the real atmospherical surface system of the Earth where we live. Yet, Dr. Hausenfeld expected her audience to trust her. 
In fact, the largest uncertainty for using the climate sensitivity to predict future climate change is due to the fact it is derived from the computer simulation rather than based on the instrumental measurements. Perhaps you have heard the term intermodal observation, which actually have nothing to do with observation in physics, but merely mean comparing different climate models by simulations. Unfortunately, Sabina and her team have become a promoter of this 21st century nonsense. Furthermore, a brief historical review would be good for you, perhaps. In 1860, John Tindall first observed water vapor and CO2 gas can absorb infrared ray generated from a metal box with a boiling water called a Leslie box. Many climate researchers and some deniers consider this as the first experimental evidence for the greenhouse effect hypothesis, which is in fact not as true as I discussed in this video. In 1896, Arrhenius proposed a single layer climate model in which the atmosphere was treated as an isolated thin layer above the ground, but his equations are divergent, as I discussed in this video. Arrhenius' magical atmosphere was treated as a double side infrared emitter that can emit both upward to space and downward to the surface. The downward one is also called back radiation. That's why Sabina told you the CO2 in the troposphere warms up the surface. Based on the Stephen Boseman law, James Hansen attempted to derive the slope of the linear dependence, but he was disappointed and frustrated to find the slope was too small, 0.18 to be exact. That's why Hansen had to introduce an imagined feedback factor to make the slope bigger on demand. But it was not until 2018, to cut the story short, an alternative justification for slope 0.45 was proposed by Crow and Crony, which is closer to the result by Manabe and Worthroad in 1967. Yet, according to my published paper, the slope is closer to 0.31. So you can see the issue has not been settled. Apparently, Sabina wished to make her point by all means, which seems weird. To my knowledge, the highest ECS, or equilibrium climate sensitivity, one could estimate is less than 2 Kelvin, without adding take-for-granted positive feedback in the presence of water vapor. I can discuss more next time. Last but not the least, it is essential to understand that the climate sensitivity is a global mean quantity. Therefore, it cannot be directly applied to predicting regional or local climate variations in the future. It seems irresponsible and outrageous for Dr. Hausenfeld to inform people who live around the equator that they will definitely suffer most simply based on the highest climate sensitivity over 5 Kelvin. She or her team picked up from a few computer simulations. In summary, it is misleading and ridiculous to pick up the highest climate sensitivity value from computer simulations as a basis to imagine what climate change would be in different parts of the world. Thank you for watching. Thank you for donation. See you next time.